Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Terry Highland. I am community liaison for the Visiting Nurse and Hospice for Vermont and New Hampshire. And I'm privileged today to be joined by Jaya Davis, who is a registered dietitian with, Southwest, with the Southwestern Vermont Council on Aging. This is our second um, in a four-part series about nutrition called The Power of a Healthy Plate. And we're so happy to have Jaya here with us to walk you guys through learning how you can really make the most out of your various meals throughout the day to be healthy. Um, Jaya, so good to have you. All right, thank you, Terry. Right, I'm gonna share um, a presentation here for everybody and Jaya okay. will walk us through it. Sounds good. It's all yours, Jaya. Okay. Um, it's still in the other mode though. Is it? Do you think it'll scroll through the slide? Sorry, I can only see it in um, the other when it's not in PowerPoint mode. Maybe it's still coming. All right, can we go back up to the first slide? Or the second one. Okay. Thanks, Terry. Um, so like Terry said, today's topic is the power of a healthy plate. And we're um, going to focus on four things. So one is to first, we're going to kind of talk about understanding what makes up a healthy plate and the importance of portion sizes. And then the next thing we're going to talk about is reviewing some of the top chronic diseases faced by Americans. Um, and then I'm, I'm just going to focus on three of those top chronic diseases and then talk a little bit about how eating healthier can improve those specific chronic diseases that you might be living with or you may have a family member or a friend who's um, dealing with those chronic diseases. So maybe those tips will help um, you help your friends and family. And then um, we're going to just review some ideas for healthy meal planning, um, just some tips and tricks that you might want to try. All right, so the next slide you know, is why healthy eating is important for you. I think sometimes we forget why, why it's important to eat healthy. You know, people are always telling us to do that, but it's just, um, the, you just forget the fundamental reasons why it's important. First of all, you know, eating gives you energy. Uh, it makes you feel better when you've eaten something. Um, if, you, if you don't eat you know, a healthy meal, sometimes you can feel irritated or crabby, um, and your blood sugars are out of control. So just to remember that healthy eating can give you, you know, a good, good energy for your day. Um, healthy eating also keeps your bones strong. So if you're getting enough of the vitamins and minerals you need, it'll keep your, your bones strong, um, and especially important as you age, um, and your risk for fractures increases. So it's important for your bones. Um, also healthy eating is important to maintain your muscle mass. If you're eating a good amount of protein, you know, it keeps your muscles strong and, and keeps you mobile and able to continue to do the activities that you like to do. And then, like I said, it's fuel for your brain, um, makes you feel good. And then eating, eating well keeps your blood sugars in control. And we'll talk a little bit more about that um, throughout the presentation. All right, next. Um, and then I just wanted to say, you know, what does it mean to eat healthy? So we, I think we hear a lot about trying this and that to eat healthy or cutting out these foods and, and trying to drink only this. Um, but I think the fundamentals for eating healthy are really the same as they've always been. Um, not much has changed over the years. So, so eating healthy really means trying to get three meals a day, you know, trying to eat something in the morning. When you wake up, it'll it'll just make you feel better and keep your blood sugars um, more stable. And then trying to eat something in the afternoon, and then trying to eat an evening meal um, and snacks in between. So, really focusing on three meals a day. And then the other really um, key fundamental thing to eating healthy is is fruits and vegetables, which I'll talk about a lot throughout the presentation. But adding fruits and vegetables to your meals and snacks is really important um, to keep keep a healthy diet. And then um, watching those portion sizes is really another key to healthy eating. I'll talk a little bit about that in a second, but um, just kind of 
knowing that, you know, trying to eat everything in moderation, I think it's fine, you know, but, but watching those portion sizes is really the key to a healthy, healthy meal. And then um, another thing to think about is watching out for those sugary beverages. I just read a study the other day that said that Americans are eating or drinking so many more sugary beverages than ever before. Um, so really trying to think about what you're drinking and how much, and again, you know, watching the portion size of those beverages is really key to, to healthy, healthy eating. And Jay, so sugary beverages, if you could elaborate, because I know I see a lot of folks um, drinking Pepsis and stuff throughout the day, which I think they know is probably not great for them, but what else, what, what, what might be a surprise sugary beverage? Sure. Yeah. I was trying to think of, you know, um, coffee drinks, you know, I think that there's some, lots of coffee drinks out there that have a lot of extra sugar. So you think you're just getting your caffeine through your coffee, but then they're adding all kinds of syrups and whip toppings. Um, so I think that's one of the, one of the places where we're getting a lot of sugar beverages and then, um, you know, smoothies and they're always kind of having those fruit juice beverages at coffee shops. Um, so those are kind of some of the ones that I've been thinking lately. In summertime, I feel like they're advertising all kinds of fun, like lemonades and juices, um, fizzy drinks, things like that. So so yeah. those might be some of the things that people aren't thinking about, but yeah. Great. Um, so this, this is just a picture of, it's called the MyPlate, uh, the US government creates these nutrition standards for Americans every five years. So they've just updated them again this past year. So if, if you're looking for resources, myplate.gov has a lot of new resources on there about healthy eating. Um, but this visual is just something that they like to, to share with everyone so they can know kind of what to look for on the, just when creating a healthy plate. Um, it's replaced the My Pyramid, which some people might remember from, years ago but um this is just when you're you know creating a meal trying to think of what your plate should look like half of your plate should be fruits and vegetables um which i think sometimes might seem hard to do but you know that's really is a key to healthy eating like i've said and then the other half is grains um, which are also called carbohydrates um, some examples breads pastas rice cereals are types of grains and then protein in the other part, um, which is meats, you know, eggs, um, nuts, seeds, things like that. And then they also include dairy in there um, as a drink or yogurt, you know, as a dairy product. And trying to look for skin or low fat dairy products would be the key here. So just kind of a visual to keep in mind when you're creating a healthy plate. And then the next one is an image of, you know, portion sizes, I think. Like I said, the key to healthy eating is is watching those portions. And sometimes people aren't interested in using measuring cups when they're cooking or when they're trying just to get a snack here and there. So using your hand as a measure of a serving size, I think, is a great way to do the measuring. Um, you can do your fist is about a cup. So um, something that might be a cup are those grain products that you want to get one cup serving like rice pasta cereal so just use your fist to measure that um, the palm of your hand is a serving of meat you know everybody's palm is a little different but it's kind of just an average so when you're when you're looking at that serving of meat that you're buying you know is it the size of your palm that would be a good indicator that it's a good serving uh, the, the thumb the, your entire thumb is an ounce they're saying so an example is an ounce of cheese um, would be the serving size that you would want. And then the tip of your thumb is a teaspoon, which I think is kind of nice because you're, you know, you're supposed to get about a tablespoon or so of, of fats, peanut butter, mayonnaise, things like that. So three tips of your thumb would be one tablespoon because one teaspoon equals one, three teaspoons equals one tablespoon. Um, and then a handful would really be what, you know what, what you would want for a portion size of a snack food um and then another visual is saying that a tennis ball is kind of a half a cup of fruits and vegetables so when you're creating your plate and you're trying to get half of your plate as fruits and vegetables you know that the size of a tennis ball is about a half a cup there so like i said you know everything is is good to eat in moderation but trying to watch those portion sizes 
is really important. All right, and then, you know, if, if it's a packaged item, the uh, serving size is really what you're looking for here. And I just wanted to give you a little, little lesson on checking that serving size. So on the back of the food is the nutrition label and underneath nutrition facts is always the word serving size. And so in this example, you can see a serving of whatever this is, um, say a bag of chips, say would be uh, one cup. So you'd, you would really only wanna eat that one serving because all of the information listed below is about that one cup. You get 250 calories about 24 grams of fat and say, you know, five grams of protein um, or 12 grams of fat and then five grams of protein. So trying to just stick with that one cup would be really important. But if you ended up eating, you know, the entire package, you can see that it says servings for, per container. So this is really a two serving thing. So if you ate the whole bag, you know, you'd be getting double the amount. So 500 calories, 24 grams of fat, you know, almost a thousand milligrams of sodium. So when you're looking at something that's packaged, you know, try and stick with that serving size so that you can keep good portion control. All right, so, so now that we've kind of reviewed generally, you know, what it doesn't mean to eat healthy, uh, we want to just kind of talk a little bit about why, why it's so important to do so for your health. And so like I said, you know, chronic disease is something that is, is pretty high in America. Um, six out of 10 adults in the United States have a chronic disease and four in 10 adults have two or more of these chronic diseases. And the chronic diseases are listed below in this picture. So heart disease, cancer, lung disease, stroke, Alzheimer's disease, diabetes, and kidney disease are all you know, chronic diseases that a lot of people are living with. Um, a chronic disease is, is something really that can be prevented. So you know, that's good news that we could prevent these things from happening. Um, and they're saying that you know, the causes of chronic disease are likely from four things, uh, tobacco use and secondhand smoke exposure, poor nutrition, so not eating a lot of fruits and vegetables and eating a lot of high fat, high sodium foods, um, lack of physical activity, and then excessive alcohol use. So you know, the reasons for these for chronic diseases are, you know, really related to four things and especially heart to, um, healthy eating. So you know, things that we can control, um, plus genetics, obviously, but some, it's nice to know that, you know, we can control this with healthy eating. And so hopefully, you know, people can want to focus on those healthy eating tips and either prevent or better manage their chronic diseases. And so I'm just going to focus on three of the chronic diseases, heart heart disease, diabetes, and then kidney disease, and talk a little bit about each one and then give you some tips for um, each, each diet to, related to what you can do to, to eat better. Um, so eating better for your heart would be, you know, one key thing would be, so eating more fruits and vegetables, like I continue to say, but really trying to add it to all your meals. Um, you know, sometimes for breakfast, I think sometimes it's hard to get fruits, but you know, if you're used to eating eggs or something in the morning, you could just add some vegetables to that egg dish. Or if you eat oatmeal, you could add some fruit. You know, you can always add fruits to cereals as well. So just some some little things that you could do to get more fruits and vegetables. Um, for lunch, you know, if you're used to eating a sandwich, trying to have some lettuce or tomato, celery, something on that sandwich to add fruits and vegetables. And then in the evening, you know, when you have a side dish, trying to to add some more vegetables into the dish or mix it with your protein. Um, the important reasons for eating fruits and vegetables are because they're high in vitamins, minerals, fibers, and low in calories. And it really can help your weight and keep your blood sugar or blood pressure in control. And then the other one is eating fiber rich whole grains. So this is, this is really an area that um, Americans are not, we're not reaching the goal here. Um, just not getting a lot of whole grain items. Uh, the goal for the week is three servings. So you know, if you wanted to work on a healthy eating, um, one of the ways would be to try and get more whole grains. The reason being is that they help keep you fuller longer and then help improve your cholesterol. It kind of binds with the bad cholesterol and, and helps get it out of the body. So 
trying to get more whole grains in your day. Um, an example of a whole grain would be brown rice. You know, some cereals are whole grains, um, whole grain breads, and you know you can get whole grain whole wheat pastas too. So um, next one. So just a few more heart healthy ideas. Uh, is I'm sure you've heard, but lim limiting the use of the salt shaker. So uh, I think lots of people are used to salting their foods. And if you salt every meal, you could potentially be getting up to 200 milligrams of sodium a day because one teaspoon of salt is 200 milligrams of sodium. Um, and so if, if you are used to salting extra as you're cooking and when you eat, you, you really could be getting all of your sodium needs in the day without counting what's actually in the foods because the daily recommended amount is less than 2300 milligrams a day so limiting the use of that salt shaker would really be a good you know goal for some people um, and then trying to use other spices instead of salt so you might have to experiment with different herbs and spices but um, it would really be worth worth the effort to do so um, the other heart healthy tip would be to eat more fish. Uh, it's recommended two servings a week. Um, I know that can be tricky for some people. I don't know fish, you know, sometimes it's just not in people's diets usually, but if you're trying, you know, if, if you do like fish, it would be a good way to, to keep your heart healthy. It has the omega-3 fatty acids, which are those heart healthy fats. Um, and some good fishes to try would be salmon, trout, or herring with those good omega-3 fatty acids. And then one other thing about heart health is um, limiting those processed and packaged foods. So examples are lunch meats, canned items, you know, frozen items are kind of a processed food. So trying to trying to limit those or we're trying to get the ones that are lower in sodium and fat. Um, if you're looking at the back of the label, a frozen meal with less than 600 milligrams of sodium would be a good option. Um, so really trying to watch those packaged foods throughout your day and throughout the week. All right, so now we're gonna talk about diabetes. Um, again, you know, I don't like to say there's a diabetic diet because it's really important to just have general healthy eating information that you can eat um, well for if you do have diabetes, heart disease, kidney disease. But you know, these are just some tips overall that would help your blood sugar stay in control if you, if you do have diabetes or if you're trying to prevent diabetes from occurring. Um, so eating a balanced plate like we've been talking about, getting a good mix of of carbohydrates, proteins, and fats on your plate. And like I've mentioned, carbohydrates are breads, pastas, rice, cereals, and fruits. And now you know that about a cup is a serving, so trying to stick with that. And then proteins, again, are meats, beans, peanut butters, eggs. Um, so trying to get a you know the right portion, three ounces of meat. And then having a good balance of fats as well in your meal, oils, butters, um, avocado can be considered a fat. So Keeping that balanced plate really helps keep your blood sugars in control. And then like I mentioned, um, watching your portion sizes. So for diabetic, I think it's really is important to watch your portion size because you don't want to cut out things like um, sweets and sugary beverages. I think you know if you do cut those things out, you're just going to want to eat them all the time and potentially overeat them later if you've you know given in to your cravings. So Try not to cut anything out. Um, just try and watch the portions of those sweets. Have a smaller cookie or a smaller piece of cake um, or choose a, you know, the smallest serving size of that sugary beverage if possible. So those would really help keep your blood sugars a little bit more stable, um, keep them from spiking so high. Uh, and, and so that would be some important tips for diabetes. And then again, eating more colorful fiber rich fruits and vegetables would really help keep your blood sugar stable. All right, and so then the last one we're gonna talk about, you know, chronic kidney disease. And this can be kind of a, a complicated disease for some people and it depends on the stage of what renal disease that you're in. Kidney and renal disease are the same thing. Um, kidney disease is likely to occur if you, if you have uncontrolled diabetes, high blood pressure, heart disease, and family history. So 
Um, it's some, definitely something you would like to prevent. Um, but if, if you do have kidney disease, you're probably seeing your doctor pretty often and they're checking your labs. And you might even be seeing a dietitian who specializes in kidney and renal disease um, diets. So definitely listen to their advice. But um, just some overall tips for kidney health would be, again, choosing more fruits and vegetables. It really helps to get those good vitamins and minerals in your body. Um, looking for low-fat, fat-free dairy products would be another great thing for your kidneys. Um, and then cutting back on salt and high sugary foods because your kidneys are filtering all of the waste product in your body. And if there's a lot of salt or sugar in there, um, it can make your kidneys overwork and cause some damage. So working on trying to cut back on that salt. And then again, eating more whole grains is really important for your kidney health. And like I said, whole grains, you know, our, our whole wheat things, um, brown rice, oats, quinoa are some examples of some good whole grains to eat. And then, I, you know, another tip to think about is really trying to slow down at your meals and snacks. I think sometimes we eat so fast and then we maybe overeat and you don't recognize when you're feeling full. So if you're slowing down, trying to eat a little bit more um, calmly, you might recognize when you're feeling full quicker and, and stop overeating. Um, I thought this was a good example, you know, trying to peel and eat your orange instead of drinking orange juice, you know, as an example of slowing down for that snack and, and really enjoying your food. All right. Um, so then just we're just going to look at a few tips to kind of start start with some ideas for how you could eat healthier um, or come up with a plan. So first of all, having a plan to keep your recipes healthy. I think if you do follow a recipe, you know, you're trying looking for those ones that include fruits and vegetables, whole grains, lean proteins, low fat dairy, spices and herbs, not salt, and then healthy fats. So trying to think um, what recipes do you like and look for those good ingredients so that you can just follow the recipe and you'll be good to go right then. Um, or if you do have some favorite recipes, you could also try and substitute some items for, you know, what what's missing. If, if it's calling for a lot of salt, maybe you could use a different seasoning or uh, you could switch your meat to a leaner protein. Um, I think another idea would be if, if it's a pasta recipe and it's a white pasta you're using, maybe you could use half white, half whole grain pasta, whole wheat pasta. Um, and then I think always add more vegetables if possible to the recipe that you know you can't go wrong with adding more vegetables than called for. So really think about your recipes when you're when you're trying to cook healthy. And then um, sometimes when you're cooking for one or two people in your household, you know, it might be nicer to look for recipes that have a smaller serving size. Um, and then recipes that serve four, you know, are really easy to half, half all of those ingredients. So just a few tips for, you know, keeping your recipes easy to follow. And then uh, it's also important for, to be a smart shopper, you know, but I think that's also where we get into trouble. We go to the grocery store, we buy all kinds of junk or things that we didn't need and and then we we have it in the house and we eat it. So, you know, before you go, try and inventory your kitchen, you know, look and see what you have already and then create a list. You know, this will really keep you on track and you'll remember, oh yeah, I wanted to get these whole grain items or more fruits and vegetables. Um, and then, you know, if you're not used to healthy eating at all, you, you really might have to start with an initial stocking trip. You might have to to buy a few things up front just to keep your cabinets full of those healthy items. Um, so I think like, you know, brown rices, whole wheat pastas, uh, things like that are shelf stable. So you could kind of stock up on those items. They'll be in your, in your house and then you'll be able to create a healthy recipe that way. Um, also fruits and vegetables, you know, those are really important. So when you're shopping, um, trying to buy in season because they can get really expensive out of season. You know, berries are definitely more expensive in the winter. So trying to focus on things that are in season so that they are a bit cheaper. And then, you know, we always talk about fresh fruits and vegetables, but you really, you can go and get frozen ones are just as, just as good. So, I, I mean, I would recommend frozen ones as well if you're kind of on a budget. Um, and then you can also get canned fruits and some, you know, canned vegetables too. And just for the fruits, look for a light syrup or the natural juice. Um, 
And then the vegetables, they do have some lower sodium ones. I know low sodium beans and, and things like that. So be kind of looking for both of those when it comes to canned things. And then, like I said, there's a ton of frozen vegetables now. You can get all kinds of different types, mixed ones, stir fry mixes, riced cauliflower. So just kind of get creative with your frozen fruits and vegetables. And then another thing to keep in mind, you know, some counter stable things that'll last a long time. So you'll have them available and you don't have to go shopping every week. Um, oranges, apples, pears, and grapefruits last a long time in the refrigerator. And then for vegetables, potato, squash, onions, celery, carrots, peppers really do last a long time too. So if you, if you don't get out shopping very often, you're know, trying to get those things that'll last a long time, then you'll be able to use them throughout the week. All right. And then the other thing is when you're shopping, looking for things that are whole grain. And the way to do this would be in the ingredient list, the first word should be the word whole. So if it's um, bread, you should see it should say whole wheat right away. Uh, cereals also would have whole as the first ingredient. So trying to look for that. Uh, sometimes it's on the front, you know, in this picture, you can see Ritz crackers are baked with whole wheat, some of them. Um, so trying to look for that specific word. And then when it comes to proteins, like I said, lean protein is really important. Lean proteins are skinless chicken, 90% or above hamburger, pork loin, ground turkey breast, and um, sirloin steak, if you're looking for kind of a leaner steak. Uh, and some other tips would be to buy, you know, buy meats on sale, and then you can freeze it for later. You could try and um, portion it out into your specific portion that you might want to do. So you can just grab it out of the fridge or freezer and, and use it right then. Um, and then beans and eggs are also good protein sources that you could use. And then, like I've said before too, low fat dairy is also really important. So when you're shopping for dairy products, look for skim items or 1%. They have you know fat-free reduced fat yogurts now and reduced fat cheese as well if you, um, want to try any reduced fat cheeses and then um, when it comes to you know smart smart shopping for the healthy fats the ones to look for are olive oils canola peanuts grapeseed oils um, and then things that don't have the word hydrogenated in the ingredient list so make sure you don't see that word um, listed in the ingredient list because that that means trans fats and those are really the the not so good fats for your heart and your body um, and then also trying to look for those canola canola oil butter blends I think there's a ton of more of those in the store these days um, it's it's definitely not the same as a butter stick of a stick of butter but it definitely has some heart healthy fats in it so looking for those different blends and then Again, trying to get away from the salt shaker. So spices and herbs are the best. Um, Mrs. Dash, you might have heard of, is a blend of different seasonings. Um, garlic, pepper, lemon, and lime juice are really great to season your, your foods. Um, basil, rosemary, parsley are a few examples. I also know that you know the, the grocery store is selling a lot of these whole plants that you could just grow yourself. If you have a window you know, in your kitchen, you could just have a little herb garden and then you'll have them there for you to use when you want to cook. And then lastly, um, just, you know, working on preparing those healthy meals. It, it does take some time to, to cook. So you might have to set some time in your day or your week. So say maybe 30 to 60 minutes one day to prepare your foods. You could potentially prepare for the whole week if you wanted to instead of cooking every day. Um, some ideas would be to cook the meats that you want to use um, on the one day and then just kind of store them for later. And you can cut up your, your vegetables and fruits for the week. Um, it might help you snack a little bit more on those fruits and vegetables if they're cut up already. And then they'll be you know ready to use in a recipe. And then um, don't be afraid of your leftovers. I know some people don't like leftovers, but you know, trying to think about how you could get creative when using those leftovers in a different way the next day or the following day, using it for your lunch or trying to make it into something new so that it doesn't seem like you've had the same meal over and over again. Um, if you made meatloaf one day, could you make it into a sandwich the next day for lunch? Or if you have a bunch of chicken, could you add it to a salad or have chicken tacos instead? So just trying to get creative when it comes to leftovers. 
And then another tip would be, you know, some people batch cook and then freeze things. So that means just cooking a bunch of something at once and then freezing those foods into single serving sizes for you know weeks to come. So example, lasagna or soup, you know, you could make a large amount of this serving of that and then um, divide it into single serving sizes, freeze it, and then you'll have it for weeks to go. All right. So, you know, just some of the key takeaways from this presentation would be that, you know, eating healthy really is a powerful tool to help you prevent chronic disease or really keep those chronic diseases that you might have from getting worse. Um, overall, really in general, eating healthy is about more fruits and vegetables, whole grains and lean proteins. And then I think it's really important to make a plan, you know, have those healthy recipes, be a smart shopper and try and keep it simple. And then the really the other key to starting to eat healthy is it set some small goals and try and meet them before moving on. So don't try and change everything at one time. Just pick a few things or one day, one goal and work on it for weeks and see how it goes and then move on after that. So just kind of keep it simple and, and start small. All right. That's, thank you very much. And, and we can take any questions. And then I do have a last resource slide um, Terry can share with you. If you are looking for resources, I think that some of these are some really good ones. It gives you information about chronic disease overall, um, and then specific, the American Heart Association, you know, the American Diabetes Association, and the chronickidneydisease.gov. Um, those all have great resources for people living with those chronic diseases. They also have a lot of recipes, so check them out if you're, if you're looking for resources. Great. Well, thank you, Jaya. <clears throat> I'm going to share those um, from the last slide in, in the comments here, and that will allow people to access them. Okay. I wanted to, one that you brought up was using substitutions, a point that you brought up using substitutions for leaner meats and stuff. And I had an example that I'd love you to grade for me if you wouldn't mind. <laughs> okay. So we do a healthy, at least we think it's healthy, um, turkey taco bowl. And for example, as I was thinking through the ingredients in my head, what changes have we made? So typically a taco dish might be beef as your protein and like a um, Mexican blend of cheese, which would have fatty cheddars, et cetera. And then sour cream on top, maybe as a dressing um, with a corn or flour tortilla, which are not whole grain. And in our household, we make our taco meat with lean ground turkey. It's super easy. Mm -hmm. We do a seasoning, which is no salt taco seasoning. It's the same ingredients minus the salt. You sure. get the spice, but without the extra salt. Nice. Um, and then I was really skeptical about this one, but my wife convinced me. We don't use sour cream. We just use simple Greek yogurt. It tastes almost okay. identical on top Good. of the taco. <laughs> and um, with um, the cheese substitute, we just used a, a leaner cheese instead of cheddar, like a provolone or something that we shred. Okay, good. Yeah. And it's amazing. It's delicious. And is that that's kind of what we're talking about today, right? It's, exactly. It's, yep. know any better. I know. I know. I think you people just get nervous about changing things, but you definitely can make things that are a little healthier, taste just fine. You know, it's a great idea about the seasoning. Um you know, you can get those taco seasonings in a bag that are already made. Um, but you could also make your own without adding the salt, like you said, just cumin, pepper, you know, chili powders, things right. like that. And it would just really be much better. Yeah, right. it's that easy. And you just yeah. throw up your fork in a bowl and you're done. It takes yeah. 30 seconds. Yeah. Um, I know they do have whole grain tortillas, but mm -hmm. they, they oh, do kind of, yeah, they fall apart a little bit easier than the, the white ones. So. I mean, sometimes people don't like that as much, but yeah. You know, By doing it in a bowl, what we do is we'll yeah. we'll crush up a whole grain tortilla chip. Sure, great. Store brand. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah, so nice. I recommend everybody try that one. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> um, uh, I'm gonna share those links actually after the fact, so those will be on our Facebook page for anybody that's watching. Um, of course, this will be recorded in the uh, various. Area associations on aging in Vermont will share these through all their different websites. So again, thank you so much, yeah. Jaya. I think that was wonderful and very educational. Thank you. Um, like I said, this will be available on everybody's places after the fact. So please, if anybody has questions, keep asking those long after this live is over and 
uh, it'll it'll live online for forever. Thank you so much. All right. Thanks a lot, Terry. Have a good day, everyone. <laughs> you too. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.